With partial fractions, this is when we are looking at a proper rational function where we first factorise the denominator function q of x into a product of linear and or irreducible quadratic factors and then construct partial fractions depending on the nature of these. And in previous examples we have seen for single linear factors we have a constant divided by the linear factor. For repeated linear factors there is a group of partial fractions with constants over successive powers of the linear factor up to the power to which it actually appears. But what happens if we have an irreducible quadratic factor as part of the expression? Now if it is just a single irreducible quadratic factor that is not repeated, it has a partial fraction which is a linear function on the numerator dx plus e, where both d and e are constants, divided by the irreducible quadratic. So let's have a look at applying this to an example. So in this case we have the expression x divided by x plus 1 times x squared minus 4x plus 5 and we want to rewrite using a full partial fractions decomposition. So looking at this the x plus 1 part that is a single linear factor and what about this x squared minus 4x plus 5? You can verify using for instance a discriminant function that this cannot be factorised any further. That is indeed an irreducible quadratic. So therefore looking at this linear factor x plus 1 first of all that will correspond to a partial fraction constant which I'll call a divided by x plus 1 and then this irreducible quadratic x squared minus 4x plus 5 We'll have a linear function constant b times x plus another constant c. And now we need to solve this for a, b and c. So as usual we start by multiplying both sides by the denominator of the original expression. So by x plus 1 times x squared minus 4x plus 5. This just leaves us with x on the right here on the left here due to cancellation equal to a times x plus 1's will cancel leaving a times x squared minus 4x plus 5 and then plus bx plus c the x squared minus 4x plus 5 will cancel for that term so that is multiplied by x plus 1. Now if there are any linear factors then we can look for a value of x that we can put in to make those go to zero as any value of x satisfies this expression. So a factor of x plus 1 that means if we put in x equals negative 1 that will be helpful. And on the left hand side that just gives us negative 1 equal to a times negative 1 squared minus 4 times negative 1 plus 5 and that's all plus b times negative 1 plus c times negative 1 plus 1 and that second term on the right negative 1 plus 1 makes that whole term go to 0 leaving us with negative 1 equals a times 1 plus 4 plus 5 so that means that we get negative 1 equal to 10a so we have found a equals negative one tenth. But how do we now go on to find constants b and c? Now there's a couple of methods we could use. One is we could substitute negative a tenth in for a and then by putting in x equals zero that would make b temporarily disappear allowing us to find c and we could then put in any other value of x and rearrange to find b. But in a case like this it is probably simpler to use the alternative method which is to expand the right hand side, group like terms that is all x squared terms, x terms and constant terms and then equate coefficients to solve for the remaining unknowns b and c. So let's see how this works. 
So the left hand side is as simple as it's going to get. That's just equal to x. Expanding the right hand side, we get ax squared minus 4ax plus 5a. Then expanding our next series of brackets, bx plus c times x plus 1, will give us bx squared plus cx plus bx plus c. And we now want to put all the x squared terms on the right together. So that is ax squared plus bx squared. We'll then put all the x terms together. So minus 4ax plus cx plus bx. And then that leaves us with our constants, which are just 5a plus c. And to understand how equating coefficients works, it will help if we think of the left-hand side as being of the form 0x squared plus x plus 0 here. Since x appears, there's clearly one lot of x in fact, but there's no x squared or constant terms. And then on the right, if we actually take out the x squared as a common factor, we're left with a plus b times x squared. For our x terms, we actually have negative 4a plus c plus b times x. And then for our constants, we have 5a plus c. And because we cannot simplify any further, that means whatever x squared is multiplied by on the left must be the same as what it's multiplied by on the right. And on the left, we in fact have 0 times x squared. On the right, a plus b. So therefore, 0 must be equal to a plus b, equating coefficients of x squared. Similarly, we have one lot of x on the left. On the right, we have negative 4a plus c plus b lots of x. So 1 must be equal to negative 4a plus c plus b. And on the left, the constant is 0. On the right, the constants, that is the terms with no x powers in them, are 5a plus c. So 0 equals 5a plus c. And we also know a is equal to negative a tenth. So that's going to help us out. We could put that into the first equation. To get 0 is negative 1 tenth plus b, from which it follows that therefore b must be just equal to 1 tenth. Similarly, we could use any of these other two equations to find c. The third equation, 0 equals 5a plus c, looks the simplest. So that will become 0 equals 5 lots of negative a tenth plus c, which gives us 0 is equal to negative 5 tenths plus c. So therefore, that means that c is equal to 5 tenths, which cancels down to be 1 half. So we have now found our values for all of our constants, a, b and c. So this is the information that we have. So now we can just put a, b and c into our expression, giving x divided by x plus 1 times x squared minus 4x plus 5 is a, which is negative 1 tenth, divided by x plus 1 plus b, x plus c, which is 1 tenth of x plus a half, divided by x squared minus 4x plus 5. And that is a valid representation, but having these fractions on the, denominator, on the numerator might be a bit messier than what you want. So we could actually drop that 10 down for the first one, so that becomes negative 1 divided by 10 times x plus 1. This one here, I would start by getting a common denominator for those fractions on the numerator. So 1 tenth x, and then a half is 5 tenths. So 1 tenth of x plus 5 tenths divided by x squared minus 4x plus 5, which finally allows us to rewrite it as negative 1 divided by 10 times x plus 1. And then again, if we 
and drop the 10 down to the denominator here. On the numerator, we're left with x plus 5 divided by 10 times x squared minus 4x plus 5. So this is an example of partial fractions when we have not just a linear factor, but also an irreducible quadratic factor.